Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the RDS Blueprint with BoatOS Pro. This is essentially a CloudFormation template that's going to allow you to provision different databases. MySQL, Postgres, MariaDB, MySQL, Microsoft SQL Server, and Oracle are all supported. In this video we're going to cover Microsoft SQL Server. If you are also looking for Aurora Blueprints or Aurora databases, there is a Aurora Blueprint here and also the Aurora Serverless Blueprint if you want to basically uh, manage the server da uh, database a little bit less. The default database is MySQL in this Blueprint, so we're going to have to override some of these values and it's pretty easy to do. I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. There are some other notes here about saying how pretty much the RDS instance properties are all configurable by our parameters. And additionally, some other properties are configurable by variables depending on how much control you need. So this makes uh, this CloudFormation template extremely flexible and configurable for your needs. Storage is encrypted by default. You can also use a existing DB subnet group name if you already have one in your VPC. If you don't, then uh, you can also just specify the subnets of your VPC and then the blueprints can create a DB subnet group for you automatically and then you, using those subnet IDs. So it depends whether or not you have a DB subnet group name already that you want to use. Lastly here, it talks about you being able to create a route 53 record that points to the database endpoint. When RDS spins up a database, it's going to create a random endpoint. And I find it's nice to have a pretty endpoint that points to that random one, just so it's a little bit easier to follow. If you're going to use route 53 here, I recommend using an internal route 53 record because we're pointing to databases here. Usage is pretty straightforward. You add the blueprint to your gem file, you configure some config values, configs RDS here, and then you deploy the blueprint. Here's the stuff to add, here's the stuff to configure, and here's the uh, deploy commands. This section I'm going to spend a little more time on right here covering compatible parameters and variables. This is important because the different RDS database engines, they require properties that are compatible with each other. You can't just say, I want to use Postgres DB parameter group family with the SQL server. That's just not going to work. So what I did was put a table together here that has values that have been tested that are going to work. If you don't uh, grab values that are actually compatible, then the stack's going to roll back. So you're going to have to do it all over. So I would encourage you to study this chart right here and then use at least these values as a starting baseline just to, so you're up and running. Here are some notes about using custom VPC. You can use a custom VPC, so you can use existing VPC if you already have one, or you could um, essentially use the reference architecture VPC, which is what I'm going to be using here. I've already deployed that, so I'm just basically plugging the values here and compose it all together. Here's a screenshot of the kind of VPC outputs here, and it's just suggesting that it's recommended to run databases and private data subnets. Uh, they are data related. You don't really want them exposed. Security groups. Here's a note about how you can use existing sticker groups if you want to, or you could just not supply this and then the CloudFormation template is going to create a security group and manage it for you. Here's some more information about how you set up a Route 53 DNS pretty endpoint. Here's some advanced properties customization. Here's a note about creating replicas. And here is some kind of more um, Settings, if you basically, if the database supports option groups, then you could create option group uh, values here and codify the process here. So you have essentially the same option group, maybe in production as well as development. You could essentially make sure they're consistent. Some considerations here at the very end. If you want a guardrail to, uh, I would suggest setting the DB instance identifier. That will kind of prevent you from, let's say, updating one of these RDS instance properties that requires replacement and then accidentally replacing your database. So you don't really want that. This is one of the caveats with using RDS and CloudFormation together. Uh, but if you just put this, uh, if you assign this, what's going to happen is CloudFormation is going to create, try to create a new database. The identifier is already taken and then it's going to roll back immediately, which is a good guardrail behavior that you might want. Okay. So I've covered that essentially the entire readme now. And now let's just jump into the write the demo. And we're going to be focusing on my SQL, or Microsoft SQL Server here. So to do that, let's first grab the gem line here. And I already have the Lono project kind of open here. Of course, I have this helper method called Blueprint that essentially does the same thing down here. So I'm just going to use the prettier helper method and delete this line code. It does the same thing. 
All right, so now that that's done, we can bundle it, and then we can go uh, the next command, which is configuring. So to configure the config files, there's a handy Lono C command that we're gonna run. We're gonna run both for both environments. So Lono development and also Lono production. Lono seed RDS is the name of the blueprint. And that what that does is it generates starter files right here. See, uh, the, the variables that's for option groups. So we're not gonna really cover that much, but we're gonna cover the parameters here. So there's the uh, development and production parameters. And that was actually generated from this Lono C command. What Lono C does is it generates the templates and then evaluates the template structure, then uh, it basically provides all this helpful starter stuff for you so you guys don't have to type it. So uh, for these parameter values, we're gonna kind of look and lean on this compatibility table here. SQL Server. So we want engine SQL Server. So let's go ahead and do that. SQL Server, so we're replacing the default value, which is MySQL, with uh, SQL Server here. <clears throat> I'm going to do it for both development and production at the same time. Then the, the engine version. So, uh, and SQL Server has different variants. There's like a, a standard edition, there's like an enterprise edition, all that. I'm just going to stick to the standard edition here. And uh, we just grab, I think, uh, the engine version. So let's go ahead and plug this in here for development. There you go. Oops, the one delete that V1 there. All right, so I did for development and production. Next value is the DB parameter group. DB parameter group is actually not part of this resource today based uh, the RDS DB instance here, but it's down as part of this resource here, the DB parameter group. So I'm gonna scroll down and basically add that in. Okay, add this in. Replace my SQL with SQL server. So that's looking good now. Uh, instance class. So DB instance class, not all database instances are supported by SQL server, okay? So you gotta actually use, you have to override this and use one that's compatible. So this is a compatible one. And you can refer to the documentation of each database, uh, essentially um, uh, engine to see which ones are compatible. So I replaced both of those. And then lastly is this license model. So sometimes you might already have your own license. So you bring your own license, B-Y-O-L, or you can use the license kind that's included here when you spin up the server. And so I'm gonna go actually override this one. And this one I actually have to look uncommented because it's uh, usually, for most of the other databases, it's optional, but not for this one, not for a SQL, not for Microsoft SQL Server. So I'm gonna move that now to the top. Okay, so that's looking good. I'm gonna verify. So I basically just covered the entire uh, compatibility parameters and values here, which is, like I said, important to study. And this is the one that you want we want to make sure that you have compatible values here or the stacks that we're back. There are a couple other values that we need to configure. So let's just review real quick. This is done. This is done. This is actually not done. The second one's not done. See, this is example value. So DB subnet group name. I'm using the reference architecture of VPC here. So I'm just going to go ahead and go to, uh, I'm in production. Yeah, that's fine. Let's go production first. I'm going to grab the outputs. And then you can see the private DB subnet group name right here. So I'm gonna grab that. And uh, this is production, so let me switch over to the production config file. And then I'm also at the same time configure the VPC because I need it right here. Oh, and I also almost missed this there. I have to uh, put that as a blank string. So it says a comment, there's a comment right here. You either must use the subnet IDs or DB subnet group name and you set the one that you're not using to uh, empty string. I guess this is how this template was designed. So now I just grab the production VPC here. All right, now we just need the development values and we are ready to deploy this. So let's go to development first. Grab to go to VPC, look at outputs. Make this a little wider, there you go. Private DBC subnet group. Okay, so I'm going. I'm sending for the development now. Here, see, is this example file or example there? So you, you gotta replace it. Uh, and VPC here is the last one. And also make this a blank screen because we're using the um, uh, existing DB subnet group name. So I'm just gonna double check all the values here before I launch. That looks good. 
the master username and password, I'm just gonna, uh, you, you want a, a better one than that one, but I'm just gonna leave it because this is a, 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 a demo. License included there. That looks good, that looks good. I think we are ready. Okay, let's go to the deploy commands now. Here are the two deploy commands. Now I'm gonna copy and paste this as if I'm gonna intentionally not copy the last no wait part. For development, I want it to be no wait, but for production, I actually wanted to pull. So let's go here and run both commands. So that's the first command. That's deploying basically the development. Uh, and then it's gonna return right away. And then now I click enter to deploy to production here. And this one's gonna actually pull because I did not use the no wait option there. I, I, watch it, I want Lomo here to pull and basically tell me when it's done and how long it takes and all that. So both stacks are actually launching right now. Let's check them on the council to make sure and confirm that that worked. So there's a development account and RDS is being created right there. We can actually look at parameters and see, oh yeah, we're creating SQL Server, Microsoft SQL Server here. And then let's look at production here. Production is creating RDS here right now too, creating progress, so that's good. So that's creating um, right there. So RDS databases, they take some time to create. Typically I found about 10 to 15 minutes. So I'm gonna pause this, so you don't have to wait. Okay, so the database finished provisioning. It took about 16 minutes here. You can see down there. We could also confirm by going in here and refreshing uh, or looking at the events here. Sorry, it shows uh, create complete already there. Uh, and then we could also check the development one. Let's see if that one's done too now. That one's also done. And we'll let's look at the events there. It started at 1802 and that one finished a little earlier. That actually finished in 13 minutes and the uh, production one took 16 minutes. Okay, uh, also for completeness, let's check the RDS console. We'll first check development here. Database instances and you see SQL Server Standard Edition. Okay, and you click here. You can see that's the Microsoft SQL Server Standard Edition. There's a private subnet, a DB subnet group we use, development VPC right there. And we could also look at production now, switch over. And that's not gonna have that database, so I'm gonna click on there, there we go. And then here it is now production VPC, SQL standard server edition. Okay, and we kind of use these parameters files here um, to basically set this pretty much same values, but let's say for production, you might wanna use a larger database, on, on development, you might wanna use a smaller database. You might want to enable different features on development versus production, all that, and that's how you can you can do that. Let's go ahead and review now. So we use this RDS blueprint, which is essentially a CloudFormation template packaged up, uh, and we used it to provision, in this case, a Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, we covered all the compatible parameter values that you need to set. And down here, this table is important. I encourage you to study it if you're gonna uh, provision this. Uh, because if they don't match or they're not compatible, the stack will go back and as you saw, it, take, it took 13 minutes uh, on development and 16 minutes on production. So it does take some time and then it rolls back and then you just have to go through this the cycle. Okay, but that is it. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Cheers.